Okay, I'm gonna type talk for a second before I start ribbiting ribbit before I start typing or talking just to see it takes like five seconds for the sound is getting picked up and I'm trying to figure out what's going on so today's video is gonna be this again Emacs I found this game so maybe we'll start there game uh yeah that's what you call it so i'm getting a little game written in the lisp and it comes with its own it has its own game engine called scarly scarly i don't know how to pronounce that but scarly looks good to me um so the first thing i'll do is start chrome just so we can go find this game Prime Garden, so I want to say that I can say Prime Garden Common Lisp, maybe. Mm, I can't remember, but I think it's on like that itch.io or something like that. There we go. I was going to say Twitch.io. Let's see here. This is the one. So there's a download. You can grab the Linux or Windows one. It's free. So that's that. Uh, the game itself, I already downloaded, so I'm not going to do that again. So Caesars, Ribbit. Downloads. Can I do that? And then Prime Garden. Oh, I guess I have to unzip the file. Guess I did not do that already. I think I wanted to make sure that. So I think there's already an exe in here. Here we go. Let me make sure the sound's down because it will blow my ears out and ears out. These things, even like a volume of level two is super loud, so just make sure it's all the way off. A lot of these little rinky-dink games do that. It's using SDL2, so you gotta be careful for your ears and <laughs> messing with the stuff. That someone's got a little common list one SDL2 game to play with that has its own little library and everything. So while I'm over here, there's a main.lisp, I believe. That's how I found out. So right here, it's requiring Scarly. And then you can see right here that it's using SDL2. So the Scarly is a actual little rigging game engine just for making little rinky-dink games like that, I think, basically. But it's something I wanted to look at. I could not find this anywhere. I did find a GitHub repository that's now gone. I couldn't find it anywhere else. So I kept digging around just because I'm like that. Because there's also a SBL, SPCL. This same guy made an SPCL Pong, and this I never found. I just dug around obnoxiously enough that you'll see in a minute of where I did end up finding Scarly. So I ended up finding Scarly uh, at 
I want to say like RT software, maybe. I think it's .NET. That wasn't, it's even like, even this right here wasn't enough to pull what I'm looking for. Let me just make sure. Why didn't I do this? RT software.net. Okay, good. Anyways, so I dug around until I found this site here, which still doesn't have Scarly until you go into Gopher and look for it. But she was nice enough to have a, a proxy, a Gopher, Gopher proxy, so we can just click here. And then under software, then under Lisp, we now have Scarly here. So I do want to leave this page open because I'll need this URL right here in a minute. And then there is a common list package. Let me just make sure I'm recording, right? Yeah, okay. Um, so there's a common list package called CL Gopher. Is this the same one? I guess it's the same one, it just has a different heading. Okay, so there's an example of, there is this, uh, it does come with a little browser thing which I didn't play with too much. And then there's an example right here. Oh, yeah, text browser. If you run this right here, but it just goes to SDF. So it doesn't let you choose where to go. So you have to go in there and pick it out. So I figure I want to try to mess with this uh, seal gopher a little bit. So let's open up Sly. And I guess I will go ahead and create a file. And we usually do this and see www uh, CL Gopher Scarly Grab dot Lisp. And what I'm going to try to do is download those files with seal gopher over the gopher protocol to that guy's gopher server, which you can't really tell here, but I'll say it's running Perl. So I think he's running, I don't remember the name of the gopher server, but it's a Perl script basically. Um, so I want to go ahead and grab that URL first. Or Scarly itself. And then I'm going to go ahead and uh, quick load. See, I'll go for. Of course, the first thing you'd want to do is like QL quick load and see if Scarly's in here, which it's not. Another thing to do is like QL system apropos and then look for Scarly. And I don't know if I think that's acceptable, but when I'm searching it that way, I might want to put quotes here. I don't think it matters, but who knows? Um, I'm hoping that text is big enough. That seems really big. So, what is next? Let's see. I don't really know this thing too well here. And I do want to run. Where is it at? This right here, though. So let me copy this. 
And I just don't know enough because I think this would be the optimal way. I'm just going to grab the whole thing up here. I think the optimal way here would be to hit Control X O to jump between these two windows. Would be a use like this right here. But I don't know how. I think this right here is kind of meaningless. It's kind of like text being printed out. But there is a download file. So. Download the file here. So what I was thinking is, like with wget, there's, you can sometimes use wget to grab it, like an index of all the stuff inside the directory. And then after that, you use wget on that file, like a list of files inside a file, rather than just going and mirroring a site or something. And so I was thinking of doing that was like try to download the, use a download file to download something that I can use and then pull that back in and try to like read each line into an A list or something. So probably like go for lines to A list and then download those files. Cause I don't really know how to use this right here yet. So it's kind of sloppy, but I just want to get those files, let's say using the seal gopher. So, I don't want to be in here. I don't even know. Do I need this to be like that anymore? So let me say control X one and then control X three to split it the other way. And then I want my ripple on that side. And so I'm going to say control X B here. And this just splits cause I'm using that helm. And although I don't really like using this like helm company a lot of times, it's doing all this bring all this stuff up. I'm definitely using this today because like if I start typing CL Gopher, it's going to show me a lot of stuff. I don't even know what, like, yeah, there's a mirror and a telnet. So here's a mirror. I might have, might have should have used this. I wonder if it will mirror that site for me. Like I was just saying, that would make it really easy. Uh, Like, can I say describe CL gopher mirror? Mirror names a standard class, superclass of gopher line. Hmm. So how did we, let me just look at this real quick. My scroller on my mouse don't work. So if I was to just grab this, display contents, get line contents, go for a line. Say CL mirror. Let's just see CL gopher mirror. Now, what's it saying? It's not telling me anything about this. CL gopher mirror is undefined. Let me just make sure it's not because it's not exported or something. Nope, so I don't know what that is. All right, so I'm gonna say Control C, Control, Control C, Alt O, just to clear everything so far. Because I didn't do that that one time. 
on the one that I messed up. All right. That's something I can play with later, I guess. I'm not sure what it is. And then we still have this here. Well, I think I'm gonna put this in a, so let's just put this in here, def parameter. And call it URL. Oops. Sorry, that to be a string. It's not so long too. All right, so now I'm gonna do a just to look and see where I'm at. IP get CWD. And I think that'll probably be in the Emacs folder. Okay, so to change a directory, since I'm using Sly, I'm just gonna say uh, comma, which brings me down here to this command. And I'm going to hit CD and hit enter. And now I'm going to tell it where I want to be. So let's see, www. And then I'm going to try to type ls over here. Uh, you can say directory, I think. And then I could say, let's say start at star, so it'll show everything. If you don't put start at star, it'll only show files without a dot in them. It's only two. Uh, but what I want to do also is make sure there's a scarly folder here. So to create a file, notice I'm trying not to use a shell too much, which I'll abandon this in a minute because this will get ridiculous after a while, but we can say ensure directory, ensure directory something. There it is, ensure directory exists. And if it's not there, it's gonna create it. And I don't know if I need to like, I'm gonna say dot slash just to make sure that it knows where I wanna be. And then let's run that directories again. And then that did not work. I wonder where it put that, or it said nil. Okay, so it said, when I said ensure directories, notice underneath it said nil, which means it failed. So it didn't like this. And is it pound P? I guess P, pound P. Yeah, see up here how it has pound P. I don't know if that'll work or not, but maybe. It still says nil, which I'm guessing it's not going to be there still. And it doesn't have a dot in it, so it should show up like that, I think. So one more time. And maybe that wants a full path. This is how you're supposed to put paths with that pound P. Let's let's know there's a path, but it usually picks it up anyway. So I'll say CWW slash we're in. Here, yeah. So that's it, pretty much. Hit Control G to get out of that stupid box that's popping up. I'm not used to that, so I don't like it. All right. That still failed. Now what I'm gonna try to do is put a slash at the end because I'm trying to create a folder anyway. Now it says two, total two, T, true. So maybe the whole time, all that was messing up was a slash at the end. So I could have maybe put the dot slash scarly slash. And then now we have a scarly folder right here. Okay. Um, there is a way which I might show in a little bit. 
that lets you move your move, change your directory with UIOP, but it, it doesn't change my REPL there. And that's why I use the comma CD with a sly, because I want my REPL to be where I'm at. So maybe I'll just show that right now. Which let's see if I can. So if I say UIOP and then get CWD, which we used already, I'm in the WW folder. So I'm going to say UIOP and then change there, I think. And then now I want to go into Scarly. Notice if I need a slash, so I'll put it there. And then now let's do the UIP, get CWD. We're inside the Scarly folder. So you would think that's cool. And maybe if I was in a SPCL REPL without Sly, or in whatever without being in Slime or Sly, then that would change my directory. But if I hit comma CD right now, and then hit enter, you'll see one of the options for me to go to is Scarly right here, which means that I'm not in that folder. And if I did anything in Sly right now, it would be inside the WW folder. So now I'm going to switch over here. And if I say UIOP get CWD, you can't tell the difference. Now, if I did not run the change directory one, and I only did that with Sly, and I did the UIP, it will know where it's at. It'll know we were in Scarly. So keep that in mind. Changing around with UIOP. There's other ones like there's a SB, SB, maybe Unix, uh, DIR, change directory or something, make directory, close directory. Um, maybe get C change directory. I don't know. There's a way to do it here too. I just, I don't know them all. There's a bunch of different ways, but I just find the comma CD if you're going to be in slide, the easiest one. I guess if this was being all in code or something, you couldn't use that. But those other ones would probably work. It's just because I'm in the REPL, I think. So I'm pretty sure now we're in line with what we need to have. And then I don't know if I need to split this back so I can read these things. Uh, the download folder. So let's just see what this takes. So CL Gopher. Download file. And down here we can see it wants a destination file. And I'm guessing this is a gopher link. Um, and what I want to try to do is download the actual, just to see what happens here. I want to download this folder itself. What I'm hoping is that I get all this right here. And I don't know what happens if there are subdirectories. Maybe luckily there's no subdirectories. So whatever I write, I can't tell if it's going to work for subdirectories because there's none in here. So it wanted a destination file. So I'm going to say dot slash. I'm just going to call this index, like an index of all the stuff that's in there. And then. Wonder if I can just feed it that URL. So it's looking for an object. So it doesn't like a string. So I'm gonna come over here, hit Q, come back over here. We're gonna go to this guy here. And here. We had a URL right here. So sdf.org, oh, super dimensional fortress. I don't know what they're running now, but in the past they were running NetBSD. It's pretty old. It's like a free shell place. You could get a free shell, but you gotta send a dollar in for it to be permanent, just to like get rid of some spammers. And there's a bunch of smart people in there. They actually run a bunch of Gopher sites. A lot of the guys over there run, and girls too, run Gopher sites. So 
Well, we need to pay attention to her uh, seal. Go for parse, go for URI. I think if I wrap this in there. So, seal. The one thing I do like about this is it doesn't care that there's not a space. A lot of times I have to put a space and come back. Uh, CL gopher, and then it was parse, oops, parse URI. So I'll hit enter there and then put a space. I really don't like how it's doing that. I don't like this not being on the same line, but I think it bothers me more. Uh, control space to grab all that. For some reason it did not like that. Oh, I know why. Because I'm missing this. So you can't really do that because I wasn't in the right spot. If I came back over here, if I was at the front again, because I was at the front here and came up, I hit Control E, Control A, and then I can use my like auto indent. So I know that looks ugly, but at least it doesn't have to run to the right so far. Without having to shrink my text. Then now I hit enter. There we go. And then now if we do the directory thing again, so here I'll just say control R, start typing directory, hit enter. And so now we have a Scarly file right there. Now rather than not using, I'm going to go ahead and open the shell. So I have to keep doing that one and two. I don't want to have to read that file inside Lisp. Although it would be nice just to ditch the shell at some point and just be in Lisp all the time if I could get that good at it. Um, so we're going to say CD mount C www scarly. And then now we have an index file. So I'm just going to look at this with less, I guess. Um, so we have, well, we have numbers at the beginning. So zero, P, and nine. So it looks like zero is a text file. Nine is possibly a binary file. And P, two P's are both pings. I'm going to say these are ping files. So then we have a URL. We have the... We'll say the path, and then the server, and then the port that we're running on for Gopher 70, it looks like. So now what I want to do is try to read that back in. And I want to say there was a an A list. So I think I want to try to get this to be Gopher line from A list. No, Gopher lines to A list or go for a line to a list if I put it in a loop. So I'm probably going to use this go for line to a list in a little bit. So let's keep that in mind. So we have that file. And I have this file over here. So let's well, I like to enter and then come over here. I did that again. Control X O to come over here. Control Space. Control Alt B. And then Tab. Now, I'm using Tab to Control X, Control S to save. I'm using Tab on this side, just the way I have this set up. And then on this side, Control X O to come over here on the other side again. I'm using Control I to do the auto indentation, auto indent stuff. And then on the left, I'm doing tab to do it because normally it's tab but I got the helm stuff running on helm and helm company running over here which I'm still getting used to which I usually don't like but I started using it I think in the last video which just to try to learn it and then this video it's actually kind of useful because I don't know anything about CL Gopher and over here I'm just going to save some stuff I should say like download index of all files at URL, let's say, 
And a gopher URL, a girl. Uh, then. Another way, that's why I'm thinking about it. I just thought of one of those. Another way to show the directory contents. There's a UI, UIOP one. It's a slash. And then, is there a directory? There we go. I don't think I need a star there, though. I think it's directory files, maybe. There we go. And then I have to give it the path that I want it to know. Which is get CWD. I don't know the difference between that one and then the UI, UIOP. What else will work? I wonder. Get CWD. Same thing. All right. I'm going to get a drink. Hopefully that's not too obnoxious. Okay. Um, now, I guess, I want to read from that file over there, which I don't think that's going to be any of these. This is going to be common list code. So if I want to grab these files from index, then, I'll use there's so many ways to do this too but let's just use the regular open for now so we're going to open whatever call it I'm just going to call it file stream for f stream for file stream it can be whatever whatever we want to call it and then open usually with open file there's a macro that's made for this so I'll probably switch to that in a minute. And then if I say dot slash scarly, I don't think I have to do that. I could probably just put scarly here. But to, for us right now, so we know it's a, your, uh, a path, let's say, I'll try to put it like this. And then I wanna say when F stream when F stream so right here is what I don't like control enter I think that gets rid of that stupid box else it would put that junk I don't want in there so now I'm going to make a loop for line equal and this is where I'm going to try to read that Go for a line to a list. I' gonna need that. Let's just see if there's a read right here first. A read dash. Read go for line. Here we go. So go for lines. So URI is parts of that we did. Reading lines from a stream with read go for line by converting from an A list let's go for a line from A list which that wasn't an A list in my file it's just lines so CL CL go for read go for line there we go and we're reading the F stream. And then we're gonna put a while here. This is why it's weird. Like while, why like the loop format, like format and loop are strange because line do, so while line do, it doesn't look like Lisp anymore right here. Like up to this point, we're kind of Lispy. 
this equal is definitely not looking. So loop is fine, but loop for line equal this and this while line do. It takes a while to start getting used to some of this stuff. So format T and then we're just going to use the aesthetic A and a new line. And then read the line in. And then because I'm open that file directly, I have to close it. So let F stream when F stream loop while do format line close F stream. Okay. Says it doesn't exist. Exist. Oh, sorry. Yeah, it doesn't. Because we're trying to open up index Scarlet's the folder. I'm getting an error, but it read this stuff in at least. See, I'll go for bad sub menu error. Run that one more time. Okay. Uh, right here, you see the stupid carrot M right here. This makes me think that this is a DOS file. So everything's fine. See, it was actually reading in, but it's still freaked out. So we want to come over here and look real quick. And there's two ways to do this. One, vim minus b, the index file. The minus b just makes it like treat it as a binary file. And see these stupid control in tilde ms. Um, I'm gonna quit out of here and just open up vim normally. And there's some different ways to look at this also. Uh, the main reason I'm coming in here is not only did we know that, but down here at the bottom, see how it says DOS. And for whatever reason. I don't know about Slime as much as Sly, but Sly for sure does not like to be working with DOS files. So it's better to convert this to a Unix file. There are programs on the command line, I just don't think I have any installed right now. Like DOS to Unix and Unix to DOS, I think. But it's easy enough inside Vim just to switch it over so it's not a big deal. Um, while I'm on the subject, you can say like set list. And then see, this is like, so you can see white space. You can change this to be octal or whatever. And then I can say set, no list. And I'll get rid of that junk. And then I can edit this file with plus plus ff equal unix. And this will also make the control m show up right here. Uh, to get rid of these things. We can use a regular expression in a uh, vim. Or you can just switch it over easily. So like one way to do this, which I think I'll do last. But once I bring these up, I can't save it as a Unix file with the command I'm going to show. I'd have to make these go away or else it won't do it correctly. So. The way to get this get rid of these things is we can just substitute these things out of here. So the percent sign I'm down here at the bottom is where I'm typing. So I hit colon the and then percent sign and then S to substitute. And then these characters right here are here to create one. You have to hit control V, control M, and then notice that it created one right here. And then I'll put a slash and then I put another slash. Now this should be good enough to get rid of it because these control M characters, carrot M characters, escape characters, we even call them these carriage returns, are only at the end of the line probably. So I don't need to put the G there. Where a lot of people I talk to think this G means global for the whole file, but it doesn't. This percent here is global for the, is saying the whole file. This G here just means if there's more than one on a, on a single, on each line, convert those over also, else it would only do the first one. So I'm just going to leave the G there because it won't hurt anything. 
you know, if there happened to be more than one of them on there. Now, if I save this file, then this program's probably not going to care. But I'll go ahead and quit out of here, even after all that, come back into Vim. And then the other way to do this would be, it's just to say set local and ff equal Unix. And then this has just changed it to be a Unix file. And if I would have left those, if I would have done the other command, the plus plus ff1, then it has this, this uh, carriage returns at the end, then it wouldn't have worked. So now if I open this file again, Notice it doesn't say DOS anymore. So I think that took too long to describe. One more thing, <laughs> too long to describe. You can always use help. So if I was to say like uh, help list list chars or help plus plus FF, then it's really good about being able to just jump you right where you want to be. And then you can see right here, here's the ones. The FF is for file format. And here's even the command I used to do it, just the one I used to use this. So uh, then you can get a quit help just the same way you, use, you would quit them, colon Q. And then now I can get out of here too. So after all that, if I come back over here and run this, then notice I still get all those things returned. And I no longer get that error. Uh, Now, what I want to say, these are the ones I want to try to turn into A list, I think, now. I do. The, the issue I'm having here is, like, these are objects, and I don't really know how to mess with these objects. So, that's why I'm going through all these hoops right now. I just don't know enough about, about common list when it's objects, too. Um, be able to tear these guys apart, I guess. So let's just go ahead and say from the index file, because this is still kind of useless for me, useless for me right now. If I just do what we just did, kind of. Oh well, let's change it. This time I'll use the with open file. But basically the same idea. I can hit Control C O. It'll get rid of some of that maybe. But I still had so many of those other ones. Oh, here we go. That's what I wanted actually, so I can see my other code too. Um, actually, so I don't have to do that again, or in case I mess up, put too much stuff over there before I do that. Let me just. Read read lines in as is that a list? No, it's not as objects. This is just what objects look like. Um, but they're usually a different color than this. I don't know for sure. But I'll worry about that later. Uh, now I'm going to say, instead of using just straight up open, uh, the reason with open file is better, especially for someone like me, is if there was an error, which there was, you saw like it gave us an error. I don't know for sure that those streams are getting closed, basically, I guess. Uh, when it runs correctly, it did, of course. But when it's erroring out, how do I know what it's doing? So with open file, make sure that stuff like that doesn't happen, that it it always closes even if there's an error. So I'm going to use fstream again. And you don't have to use a let here. Like you don't have to close it. It's opening it. And you don't have to use a let to open it either. So the fstream is kind of like it's making that be this. So that is the let basically this right here. So this time I'm saying fstream. I'm going to give it the index file because we're in that directory. I don't think I have to put the dot slash there like I've been doing. 
and it's kind of similar as before on F stream. I guess I could have brought that down a little bit with Control L, Control Enter to get rid of that stupid crap. Enter loop for line equal. I think this could be the same still. So far, I'm going to collect. So I'll just type it out. Go for read, go for line. F stream. And then right here, we'll say while line collect. I'm going to put this all on the list too, even though I'm already doing an A list. I don't know. Let's check this out and see what happens. Uh, go for, go for line to A list line. I'm getting close to the edge here. I oh, barely made it. Okay, I think that's exactly what I want to have. So now we put this over here. Control space, control B tab. And then I'm gonna say read lines in to a list. Because we can grab that stuff out of there in the A list. Um, and then just for right now, let's say we throw that. So if I hit star, it just means the last thing that it, that the REPL has returned. So I'm going to say def parameter star, like a thing. So we're going to call it, let's just call it links for now, links and then star. So these are just earmuffs saying that this is a special variable or a global variable, if you prefer to call it that. And this right here just means all this stuff up here. Oops. Enter. Let me cue out of that. Uh, and then now if I say links, then I have that information there. And then what are we going to have to do from here? Uh, well, I guess before I go on, there's, I don't know, like there's just to, just to show, because I'm reading those in a special way, but the way I had to do that with open file and the open, there's also like UIOP has read, uh, read file line. I want to say lines, so when I need this one, read file lines, and if I say index, then that read it in as a list, all one giant list. And then there's also file string, I think. That one, it'll read it in as a string. So that's something to keep in mind. Those might be less tacky ways to work. I don't know how portable UIOP is, but I'm, I think all the popular lists, most of them have it. If I'm not mistaken, it comes with ASDF. So as long as it has ASDF in your Lisp, it should be in there, but I don't know that for sure. I think I read that sometime somewhere. Um, And I don't know if I need to merge these path names. Can I download that file? I don't know what name I want to give it. 
in this directory. Um, so maybe I'll just do that. If I create a function out of it, I don't have to worry about it too much, maybe. So there's a thing that when you're working with path names, I don't know if I'll have to do it here, but might as well know about it. So if I also say merge path names, and I don't know how long this will be, so I'll separate it. We'll use UIP, UOP, get CWD like we've been doing. And then I'm going to cut this real quick because I need to make sure if I get one of these guys real quick. If I say like uh, car links, we have all this. And what I'm going to try to do is get to display string. So I get the file name and then merge it with the path that I'm in right now. So from here, here I would say because then I have to put a cutter or a second around this so a sock I'm so used to using car and cutter but this should be our car and cooter car and cutter whichever you prefer uh, first car links and then a sock display string yeah string that's the one I want And then we still have to put the second of this to get it out of there. Cutter then. Cutter is what I want. Maybe that's why I'm so used to using that instead. Because I don't have to think about what I'm doing. Uh, that gets me the last one. And so now I can go back. I wonder if I just cut this also. Now I'm going to hit Control Y to paste that back. I'm going to hit Alt Y. after, Right after pasting with Control Y, hit Alt Y. And it'll start toggling through. And this is what I want. So now I'll hit Control Y and Alt Y. And now it's going the wrong way. I don't know how to go back the other way, though. So let me just get rid of this right here. Um, and then I can go up here and grab it. Control I, and then Control I to, to uh, indent like you normally would with tab. And then that creates a path name, just in case I need this in a minute. Uh. Let's say let's call it a full path name to save file as okay and then maybe so it's a little bit less typing. It's not much less typing, but to reuse that, I can paste that if it's less typing. So, so I'm going to define a function. Uh, create, download, path name. Obnoxious name, huh? Uh, go for alias is what I'm feeding it. And then also control J just to make sure it's not executing that. I'll just put like a documentation st string. I'll just say create file name with local path. 
create file name from local path and file name on server and then control I to the or tab depending on what you're in and then I'll just come down to the bottom of this to come down to the bottom I'm just hitting control out greater than sign goes to the bottom of a file in Emacs and then control space control B control I or tab to reindent that and I did something wrong so go for a list because hmm. that's going to be different or it's going to be the same I don't need first anymore because I'm going through these let's say this just becomes go for a list before I hit return I'm going to hit control C control O to clear the trash the warning or errors or whatever that was all right and so now I should be able to grab that so if I come over here and look we have index And now maybe we want to test to see if we can download with that. And first thing we're going to see, I guess, if this works. Create download. Path name. And then we'd say car links. To get one of those links out. And then it got one. So we could hear it now say second, I would believe, or third. And so we can grab different ones out of there. Okay. Now we want to actually try with the seal gopher download file. There we go. That's it. Well, I guess I could have typed it over here too, though, to see. So CL go for download file. We're going to grab, let's just grab the first one to make it easy. Uh, we'll use the create download path name. We'll say first instead of car this time. Links. And then we need to give it the ugly. So we're going to get the first of CL Gopher. Gopher. And this one's the Gopher lines from A list. With links, this is correct. And now, if we say directory, directory, and then we'll do the star that star. Of course, I really should be doing that. We got the manual over there now. So here we can say like less editor manual. And so there's some instructions of how to move around. My throat's more sore than usual. Maybe this video is just too long or something. When uh, talking too much, I guess. Okay. So now we're getting files. I'm going to go ahead and remove this. I think I read it, overwrites it, but I'm not sure. I was reading that or something else when I saw that. Um, let's 
So now that we actually created a file here, I guess now we got to work on getting the all those names out of there. Hmm. Let's see. Wait, did I grab that out of there? Let me just give an example of. So I have something to reference, if nothing else. So this is test download of a file. Only copying stuff that worked at some point in time over there. So I'm going to try to create the path names first, I think, with a loop. So let's say loop for link and links. And then we have to put a do there. And then we'll print it else. It would create it and we wouldn't see it, right? So so for now we'll have to print it. So download path name. And then now this is gonna be link instead of first list or whatever, because we have this here. And then now we get all the files that are over there. Get all file pass path names, let's say, or should be create, I guess. But who cares? And then we need to do the gopher ones, the the funky one. So now we'll print these guys out. So this is going to be a loop too. So loop for link and links. And then we need to do um, going to print these also. And then these are seal gopher lines from a list. Come on, you know what I was typing. That's the one. And then we still just put link here. So, port. So that's the first thing. This thing port is not a list, which is fine. I think I can just create a list around this though. List link. Where do you get that from? Uh, control C, Control O, just to keep all this more compact without warnings being everywhere. And that's. That's what we want to see. And each one of these is a list now because of that. So I can use these as a list, let's say. I'm gonna hit set control C, control O to get rid of that too though. Um, even though it's working. And this is, what is this? This is the gopher, gopher lines. I'm just going to call them gopher links as or we can say like gopher objects uh, in a list. So I'm just going to keep building on top of this, I think.
this right here. I think I need to make sure a car works here. Uh, grab the wrong one. Okay. So now I, I pulled them out of the list. think oh this is working with that stuff on the left over there now we can download the files so right now so I don't want to use this stupid uh, global variable, but I need to make sure it's working before I switch. So I'm just gonna figure like I'll just redo what we did using links, and then I want to get that out of there. And I think I'll use that with open file and bring it down into this afterwards. Um, so. I'm going to say paying attention over there to the download file part. Right here is what I'll be working off of. And then eventually I'm going to merge these two together so I don't have to use links anymore. And then merging this right now with this and this. Because these two both need to be here. This is the first one, and this is the second one here. So, I'm going to say loop for link n using the global variable still in links. Do still go for download file and then we created the function to be part of that, which is right there. So create download path names, link. Then we're going to have to use the car that we didn't put over there, but we did it on the second ago. I probably should have copied that one, but Go for lines from a list, lines from a list, and then here we got to create a list around the link. It's not exactly what I want, but we can turn it into that, and then theoretically, there is no class name common list mill. Get a little bit of a different new list. Last link.
So I'm using the wrong one here, maybe. I'm using line and over there is lines. That tab completion, command completion uh, trick me. There we go. Okay, so then we could use our control R directories. And then we can list that over here too. Okay, so uh, let's list scarly.lisp because this is what I'm after. I notice there's like three files, scarly, objects, and player make this game engine. I think those three files. That was... And there we have the files now. So job complete. Although I kind of want to make that cleaner where I don't have to use all these. Uh, it's not very reusable right now, really, because we use like a def parameter global variable. So now I kind of want to wrap a let around the width open file. So we can use that with open file. Control C, Control O. Oh, it didn't get rid of that. Control C, Control O. That's interesting. I guess I can't get rid of that output. Hmm. I don't think I've seen that before. Um, this is going to be a lot of typing, I think. So, I could try to copy that stuff. Download all files using links, which is ugly. And I kind of want to go right here, bring this down. Do I see the with open file here? If I bring that down, down to the bottom. This one's the middle. Oh no, I want this one to be the bottom, right? There. Just using Control L in different places, trying to get the width open file and that in the same picture here. Let's just see how much do I have to edit if I do this. So first off, this needs to be in a LED. And I'm just going to call it links. Because we already have links. Put uh, earmuffs around it. Um, now links is going to become the width open file. F stream index can stay the same when F stream can stay the same. Root for gopher lines and F stream. And then wild line collect from there. Now, 
that's on a new line. I think that will bother me a little bit, which this probably looks ugly, but if it doesn't go off the end, I have to leave my let open so I can use it. And now we want to loop for links. So let's try to figure out how similar this code will stay if we just come over here and paste it. And then see if it'll indent. Yuck. Can't undo that. Why did that indentation get so ugly? What if I just do this one? Okay. Um, so loop for links. Loop for link and links. First off, get rid of these guys. Let's create download. Wonder if I should undo that part. One car lands from A list, list link. I think all this stuff stays the same. The only other question I have is if I should undo this part. Also, I have to have that function too. That was the merge path. Let's just see. Probably should test it before I do this to see if it's working, but um, merge path names. And then actually, I want to embed that first. And then this was UIOP, get CWD. And we were getting the cutter of the ASOC of the display, display string. Let me just go make sure. It's this one right here, actually. Okay. Oops. Cutter ASOC display stream. Link. So that code changed a little bit. That's doing something. Uh, the only gotcha here is there's already files in there. I'm just going to rewrite them. Yeah. So here we can say RM just to make sure. Get rid of editor. Get rid of Kong. Get rid of level. Uh, I need index. There's a bunch of star. There's a bunch of S's in here. There's a bunch of T's in here. All right. So let me run that room one more time. And we got them back. All right, the job is complete. Now, of course, all this is happening because I don't know how to use those objects. If we go back to this right here in the very beginning, this guy here. Hey, let me copy this one more time. Come back over here. And then let's get rid of this. Right here, it's probably better just to, let me cancel out of that. Come over here, 
for the quotes. Let me just retype the quotes. So if I was to hit control space here, control F, then backspace that, and then I'll just retype the quotes. Control X O and Control Alt less than jumps to the top. And then here. I'm gonna copy this, paste it over here. That was what gave me this. And what I wanna know is like if I get rid of that and get rid of this, alt space just gets rid of all but one space. So it's a little bit easier to deal with. Control space will automatically highlight the current S expression. And all that was, so let me control D, control J, control I, um, and see what this does. So if I could figure out more about this, this object right here, I want to say, has everything I need inside it because just with this right here, get contents, it turns into this, which means I don't have to download all that stuff, the index file, right? I want to be able to download all this stuff without downloading an index file, basically. But this is, I just don't know, like this is an object, but we can't inspect it at least. So. It has a slot. It's got a slot called lines. And then if I inspect this guy here. Yeah, see, here we go. This is what we want to use, actually. Um, I mean, I waste all that time typing that stuff. Let's just try to figure out this. So we have a slot now. Oh, this is the deeper one. So I'm going to hit, well, wait, 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 wait. Does this, can I see these slots too? Okay, so all those guys are slots. So this is what I was grabbing by earlier, the display string one. So we have slots. I don't really know how to mess with that stuff though. Um, I want to say L, Alt L, L, L goes backwards. N, yeah, N goes back where it was, I think. So I hit L again. So like if we could get like what's inside these lines right here. So what if let's make we don't have a star index yet, do we? Okay, so let's def parameter this star index to be the above object right here. Yeah, I know, so I'm trying to make it. Control C, O to get rid of that trash. I misspelled that parameter. I guess I should be. It's doing it to me now because I misspelled it or what? Why are you trying to do that? It's like telling me the wrong thing. Uh, so now if I say index, it should be that object. So how do you get a slot though? The slots, that's when I'm creating a class. Slot value, okay, slot value. And then down here, it's telling me slot value, object, slot name. The object is the slot name is lines. The index is the object. So let's put index here. And now it wants a slot name, which I don't know how to give it a slot name. Is it just lines? Nope. 
So it's attempting to read slot value. The slot lines is missing from the object. It has a slot CL gopher lines. Okay. CL gopher lines like this. Um, let me get rid of, come over here and hit Q, and then I'll come back over here. Uh, too many colons and see I'll go for a little gopher has too many colons over here so it's Q out of there which means this is not a keyword it's just a can I just be a symbol maybe okay so now we got that and that's basically what all that work was earlier. Okay, so now we need to come over here, I guess. Well, you know what I need to do is so say control X B over here and copy this guy here to the bottom of this page. And Get a slot value from an object. In this case, get all lines what well, was called lines actually, so all lines from uh Index, but from Gopher, from Gopher object. And then we'll say index just to keep it. Now come back over there, control X B, and then enter because it's the last one. Control X O to get back over here. No, I want to be over there. And I want to get on this object and hit enter. The proper list. Well, I was trying to see. Is this what I want? No, this is going too deep somewhere. Uh, L, L. Earlier, I don't understand. Earlier, we got to this. So let me go L. What did I do wrong? Okay. So it matters where we click. So. We're not trying to inspect this variable, I guess. The slot, I don't know. We're trying to inspect the object that I do know how to pronounce what I'm trying to say there. I don't know what the other thing was. Um, this is each object that was in there, I guess. So now I want to try to get one of these by using this. Display string. Is that the one we care about? I think that might be the only one we care about in there. So. We're going to have to get a slot value again. I have to, I think I have to use that. Do I have to use that? Because each one of these lines. Make it a little less tacky. If I get those down, I'm going to use a global variable. I'm trying to misspell this word again for some reason. Must be getting late. Have I not slept? Uh, and I'm going to call this an entry. Is 
this isn't like here you see this parentheses the last one's a parentheses which means this is a list that it's giving me so that means that I want to get the first one to get an entry is this true no too many colons and seal gopher I'm on the wrong copy so we already fixed this issue so this should just be one entry here okay so now we can get one of these guys now if I can try to use a slot value here without having to type all the other stuff um, to make sure this is working slot value entry and then we have to put seal gopher it's going to complain we know that and I'm trying to look for display string Okay, so we got one. So that's another piece of the puzzle. Granted, it's using the stupid that parameter stuff, the bubble variables. So get slot, get slot value. From an object inside an object from entry object inside uh, index object let's see of course that's not proper terms here but a go for object Get a gopher object out of a gopher object, the slot values out of them, and then the, the second one has my. That's the way I download these things. Like the download file knows how to do that, right? Did I remove these guys? So now I have to remove these guys again. So rm and last time editor kong level I did s star but if I do f star because I'm in z shock and hit tab and then it does that in t star tab that way maybe it's not as scary as using stars to delete stuff um so we use seal gopher and then the download file and then I don't care about the name right now I just want to make sure that if I use first and then grab the slot value over here slot value Index gopher lines. Because the entries the display this time, what I need to put here is uh, file name file path. Let's say just so I'm not confused. And this is actually the gopher URI object. Container, I'm just going to say. Just so this makes sense to me, even though it might not make sense. Because I don't know what to call this stuff. Um, which means I need to use the first one there. Right, do I have those right in my head? I think actually if I just come over here and copy this guy here, go back over here and just get rid of all this. Then I now have test file. Which if we list this test file should be the manual, right? Yeah, okay. 
So RM test. Okay. So now to get rid of global variables, we gotta kind of combine these two guys together. So slot value car slot value index I'll go for lines, right? And then let me go ahead and enter here because it's getting ridiculous long. Let's say now let's see I'll go for display string. We wrap this to a download file. Download file. See, I'll go for, of course. Just like this. So, slot value, need the car, the slot value, the index, lines. Let's see, I'll go for a display string like this. Maybe you get the car again, because we're still messing with these slot value of the index. So, go for lines. Oops. Right. Something had too many arguments. Let's just cat it because I know now it's not a binary file or nothing in there. But then now my terminal is all ugly. Oh well, too bad I can't control. C control. Oh, get rid of that in that one. Okay. Gonna drink again. So we're downloading these files. I'll remove that. And I'm gonna have to start trying to move this into a loop. I, mean, I don't know when I start this video, but it seems like it's been a while now. I think this is the longest video I've done since I started using the OBS, so hopefully, hopefully it goes all right. So, to get this in a loop, how much of that can I keep in here? First one, I'm still going to use a global variable. 
the second one for the display string. I think I'll take that one out first. So let's say loop, loop for entry in. I want to be grabbing that bottom part kind of here, right? So I want to say slot value index. See, I'm just looking at the bottom down there. CL gopher, which you can't see because these stupid things popping up. Lines. I guess I'm not trying to download stuff right now. So I'm gonna print this first. Before I try to download stuff. Because this is like going to a hard drive and stuff, so you better be careful. I need to do here alt space to get rid of all but one space there. And then I'm gonna print. Value. Yeah, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna get rid of this stuff because it's not helping me think at the moment. Slot value. Index. up there already do print slot value entry display string oops and then Okay, here, these are actually objects, the print, I don't know if print's going to like this object here, print entry, oh, okay, that works. I thought I said print object. looking for a stream down here it shows print object and then the stream so that's the object the object would be entry and the stream I don't know can I just use nil I know there's a variable for that stream output or something that's at least a little cleaner looking so here's the file name and here's the object this is a text file, a binary file, and then ping files. Uh, okay, so it looks a little bit better. So, I'm gonna copy this over here, I think, just for my own sake. Uh, Still using the variables. Oh. Um, still move. Let's slide. Values. 
it doesn't need to be more than that because I'm just trying to use that as a reference now. So, control C O will get rid of that. Yes, it will. Um, so now we want to say look for entry and slot value index. You'll go for lines. That's going to stay the same. And do see, I'll go for download file. Some of that will stay the same. So I'll keep that stuff and try to work with it this time instead of uh, flaking out. So, see, I'll go for download file. I'll go ahead and put a new line there. And then we want the slot value entry See, I'll go for display string to stay there. And then here. I'm pretty sure we just want to put the entry here. Because that's the object. Each one of those things. We don't have to convert it anymore. Let's see if that was indented correctly. And then Then loop keyword entry. What? I have a do there. Why are you telling me that? That's all one thing. Oops. That should all go together because it's for the download file. Oh, it's actually doing something. There we go. So, this actually works in downloading stuff. We still have a stupid index variable there, though. So, download all files from download all gopher files from the global variable still. This is going to be the last thing I do, I think. Because uh, it's getting too long. So now I want to create a function. That I think I'm just going to give a, U, a gopher URL as a string to, to download all the files in that folder. Of course, I don't know what happens to subdirectories because there's not any in this particular URL I'm using. I really don't care. I don't know. I just wanted to, you know, I dug around so long trying to find this library that I figured I might as well do something with it. I haven't, even if I'm not going to write a game with it, at least try to get the files with Gopher, I guess. So let's create a function. I almost want to call it like grab Scarly library or something, but. I'm going to say grab gopher files because I don't know how generic it'll be. So uh, I'm going to use girl string for gopher URL. And string just so it's known that it's supposed to be a string. Else it's just, they get so long, like grab gopher files. Those names a lot of times are long, especially in the old days very uh, verbose rather than tears. I guess arc arc was trying to get Pograms arc lisp was trying to be more tears I guess. Uh, download gopher files let's say from URL 
URL, and then we'll say curl string. It should be a string. Which it barely doesn't fit in there. Uh, what I'll do here. I don't think it likes this. But until my function's done, I'm going to do it like this. I'm going to take it a run like that. Um, I think I've tried that before. I don't remember. We'll try it in a minute. Oh, it did not like that at all. It didn't even let me hit enter, even though it's not finished. It's so, so uh, obnoxious. But I'm going to leave that string like that, I guess. I'd rather it be just ignored than make everything else funky. Um, although I kind of don't need that other window anymore. Cause, well, yeah, I do, because I'm going to pay attention to it right now. So let's... Index Sorry now it's gonna annoy me too. Go for files from the URL girl string should be a string. Eh, ugly. What is this? Troll I. But oh well. Maybe I'll correct that if I remember when I put it over there. Like I don't have to worry about this. Because I make my text smaller whenever I'm doing it myself. Uh, index of files. Still go for. to look at the front of that. Um, sorry here, get my contents. Guess I never co copied that over. Oops. See, I'll go for get line contents and then I need to parse the gopher URI. Right? So, see, I'll go for parse gopher URI. So the girl string comes in. And then from here, we create a loop. So it should be loop for entry in. And then from here, slot value index of files which is the name of my let let variable and then this comes with cl gopher lines And then we need to do 
see I'll go over download file. And this was a slot value entry. Let's see, I'll go for display string. And then we just need entry here. And then to test that out, I'm just going to copy this over here now. Hopefully it works. I'll have to do that again. Say, finally. Um, I know it's already there. Files from go for a folder, let's say, because I need that guy here. Oops, what did I do wrong? Control X O, and then I need to say grab. Yeah, that was right. Grab go for files. Then I want to grab this guy here. And then I need to make sure I remove that stuff. I did not. So our M, another Kong level S, S star T star. Oh, what's that? And it's doing something. Just to make sure that one of them's there. Object that list. And there we go. Uh, so, I mean, if nothing else, maybe that's a starting point of using CL Gopher. Even though this might just be for this one particular URL. Um, ribbit 